David, process of the exaltation. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. And whatever you do, do it happily as to the Lord and not unto man. 24. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Then the other one is 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9. But it is written, I have not seen, never had, never have entered into the heart of man the things which God prepared for them that love him. So let's keep to that, brethren. Remember I said the topic of this exhortation is the reward of stewardship. When we say stewardship, that means taking care of the job, taking care of job, serving diligently. Maybe a job is given to you, you're asked to supervise it. I also want to make you know that if you are a mother, you are also, a ste- you are also performing the work of stewardship by taking care of your children and your family. The responsible management of God's resources is called stewardship. These resources could be in form of possession. Everything in the earth and on its inhabitants, remember it belongs to God. We are to manage it for him. Even gifts, calling, spiritual gifts, talent, and so on like that are the things that we are put in, put in charge to take care. Now the question is, how do we take charge of this thing? How do we do it? How do we manage it to the glory of God? Now, as I was telling you, when this course was going on, there's a story of a particular lady that really strikes my mind in the Bible. That is the widow of Zarephath. You might be wondering, wow, how? I discovered that she's a good, she really performed her duty on that. My brethren, we all know the story of the widow of Zarephath who fed Elijah when there was famine in that land and there was no more water in the brook. In that land, there were a lot of sin. Every, most of the people on that land were sinners. But for God to notice the poor woman, that is why I took, I took her as a case study. She, so, she was so poor, that means she was doing something that was spectacular. So what are we doing? In the area God has placed us, are we doing something spectacular to the extent for God to remember us the way God remembered the widow of Zarephath? That area he has placed you and me, Area in ministry, area at work, in the society, in the family. How are you doing it for God to remember you the way he remembered this widow? Now, let me, I want to bring out five points that this widow had and that made her succeed and had a very great miracle that eyes has not seen and ears have not heard. Remember I said that we will be referring back to those areas. First of all, she honored the word of God, appreciating the man of God. The question is, ask yourself, how do I honor the word that comes out on the altar? How do I honor the word that is ministered to me day in, day out? Do I just take it as a normal thing? Right from when I was growing up, I was always telling my mother that the word is enough for me. It's not that I don't like people laying hands on me on anything. But immediately you pass the word, it's the word I need. And my faith is so much strong in the word that whatever this Holy Bible says, I stick to it. Now the question is, how do you honor God's word? How do you appreciate the man of God? Is it that you think, oh, even though I'm even older than them, I can't even just respect them. Despite the fact she was seeing Elijah for the first time, she knew that the grace of God was upon him. The second thing I see there is obedience to the instructions, despite all odds. She has the right to say no. There sometimes we might not have money on us. We might not have anything. But there might be sometimes they say that let's contribute to do anything. Remember that our life as a Christian is sacrificial. Now, now ask that question. Despite all odds, if you've been asked to go a mile for the, for the gospel, will you be able to go? Remember we are talking about reward of stewardship. If we want spectacular miracle, we want something that the eyes have not seen, that the ears have not heard, that even the heart has not perceived. Are you ready to go extra mile? Are you ready, irrespective of the circumstances I might be facing, 
Some, some people, you know, I, there was a time some people will ask me, despite all what you face in life, especially marital life, when you come out, it doesn't show on you. You are still smiling, you are still doing all this. It's the grace of God. That's not the issue. The issue is nothing can separate me from my maker, no matter what the challenges might be. That is was exactly what this widow of Zarephath, she doesn't even care that the fact that what she had was just a little flaw. Then the third thing I see there is ready to sacrifice despite none. Are we ready to sacrifice? Are we ready to sacrifice? Is it only when we have that we are ready to sacrifice? Sacrifice doesn't mean in cash. It also means our time. It also means our love. It also means thinking about your fellow neighbor. Are we ready to sacrifice? This woman was ready to sacrifice without even looking back, without saying, mm. Let's assume you have about 10 pounds and def definitely income wise, you know, for the next three weeks, you cannot have another money. And somebody now come to you and said, please, can you spare me eight pounds? I'm really, really hungry. Will you be able to do that? Will you not be calculating as how our apostle always say we calculate on income instead of revenue? And many other areas like that. Even this thing talks to children. How, do you, how can you sacrifice for one another? This, sac this sacrifice that this lady gave brought a great miracle. Then the fourth one is great faith in the word of God. Hmm. Yes, we all can say we have faith, but how do we apply it? When the challenges come, when the tests come, how do we apply it? Then the other one is she did not give room for procrastination. This is one of our problems. I am giving a testimony for it. Before I could start, you know, doing the shelter with my fellow brethren, I was always, I procrastinated for well over nine months. Until, they, until the day I had a message about procrastination. Procrastination can delay our miracle. It can delay our reward for good, for good stewardship. Now, this is a Bible verse that when my mother read to me when I was young, I so much like it. 1 Kings 17 verse 14. This is one of the woman's great reward for good stewardship. For the jar of flour will not be used up. And, our, and the jug of oil will not run dry. The day the Lord gives rain on the land. Will that be our portion? It's not only in material things. Then the second one is the reward of restoration of her of the widow's son. Maybe if she hadn't had done that for the man of God, the son would have died off. My brethren, don't let us be like uh, Ananias and Sapphira who were in trustworthy in their stewardship. We all see what happened to them. We all see what happened to Gehazi, the assistant of Elisha. Every now and then when I read that Bible passage, I'm always ashamed of him. That why could he behave like Elisha who got double portion? He's meant to have four pool portion, but he, he missed it. What about King Saul? He missed it in his stewardship. And I pray that this little period that we have to talk to ourselves, that the Lord will give us the grace to be like a woman like Dorcas. She's even my best friend in the Bible anyway. The woman who was filled with good deeds, with love. Despite the fact she was dead, see what happened. That's the reward. And I pray that this is going to be our portion. That our reward, eyes have not heard it. Ears have not heard it. Hearts have not even conceived it. My brethren, let's continue with this job. With this good stewardship. And God will help me and you. In Jesus name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you my sister. Minister Caroline, that was very powerful. The, the words of stewardship. Open the floodgate in abundance and cause your rain to fall on me. Open the floodgate in abundance and cross your rain to fall on me. Baba, oh, oh, say, Baba, oh, oh, say, 
Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jehovah God, we thank you that you have given us this opportunity today to come in your presence, to worship, to glorify, to lift up your name. Lord, bypass this version and let your Holy Spirit, O oh God, take over and speak on my behalf. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Children of God, I'm going to speak about the spiritual gifts and how they manifest in our life. Spiritual gifts are the primary instruments of manifesting the royal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Right from the beginning, God Elohim ordained his son, begotten son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit to plant him in the womb of his earthly mother, Mary. The power of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 35. The Holy Spirit does not operate in a vacuum. It needs you and I as vessels which are surrendered. The vessels that have given up worldly life. The vessels that have forsaken all but given in to be used by God. Not only was Jesus Christ incarnated by the Holy Spirit, but we remember very well that Jesus Christ did not do any miracle before his baptism when the Holy Spirit came upon him. The power of the Holy Spirit, the instrument that God needs to do the work of the order of Melchizedek on earthly realm. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, straight away he came out of the water, River Jordan, and the Holy Spirit. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came down upon him. And he was laid in that power of the Holy Spirit to the wilderness. A lot of things happen in the wilderness. Don't forget what happened to Jesus Christ when he went to the wilderness. If you remember, most of these powerful instruments, the vessels that God used, they passed through their wilderness. Remember, all the apostles, before Jesus went up to heaven, he said, wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Until my father sends the Holy Spirit. That was the wilderness of the apostles. They stayed in one house for 10 days. I'm telling you, if you and me, 10 days become too long. I just imagine that where they could go was only just to go out to the toilet and come back in the house for 10 days. That was the wilderness of the apostles. How about Saul? When he was, when he completed his deliverance service on the road to Damascus, he went and stayed three days in the house and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. But soon after that one, Apostle Paul went and Stayed in the wilderness for three years. The wilderness experience perfected him. And when Apostle Paul came out, he spoke with power and authority. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, a lot of miracles took place. And the words that came out of his mouth could heal the sick, open the blind eyes, let the crippled walk. And a lot of work was done. Through that. Yeah.
Yeshua went into the wilderness with the strength of the power of the Holy Spirit. In in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. If you have gone through your wilderness and you keep in obedience of the word of God, the Holy Spirit, the power, that the instrument that God has given you will not depart from you. You and I, we are so fortunate that God has opened our eyes to come to this place of training, of teaching, of the tear process that we are going through. A lot of people are looking for such a place, but they cannot access it. Let us give thanks to God and appreciate the work the commissioners, Apostle George and Pastor Grace are doing, and all the vessels that God is using them for this commission. It's now spread all over the world. Let us pray that nothing from anywhere will take us away from the, the process until we complete in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God that we are within the Omega Church. Arise. If we don't see in depth the importance of this ministry, the importance of Arise Church, it is the end time church. What the teachings that come from Pastor Grace, digging deep series, children of God, if we take seriously what comes out of this training, none other churches have done this. But we are so fortunate that the Lord has put us here and we believe that a lot will happen to us as we continue in obedience through this exemplary church. We shall reach the end successful in Jesus' name. We also know that there are immediate terms and conditions. There are immediate terms and conditions. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believed on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father, let us not suffer our faith. Believe in the God, the creator of heaven and earth. And also have obedience to the commission. That is the way forward. We shall do. We shall succeed. Secondly, it is not only religiosity, but let us emulate what Jesus Christ did when he was on earth. Let us attach ourselves. Be the best example to us what Jesus Christ did. We should not go out and do and speak whatever comes out of our mouth. That is what is happening in the world. Let us not do what the mistakes, the error, the, 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 the abominations, some people calling themselves Christians, they are doing in the world. Things have gone amok. But we are getting the teaching here. We shall definitely go in the right way in Jesus' name. Finally, the word of God says in Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on him day and night. Let us not suffer ourselves and take emotion to rule us, but let us speak the word of God to be our direction, to be our light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.